Word of Faith Netcast is on the air. Well, praise God, this is Dr. Bill Bailey, and this is the Word of Faith Netcast. I'm glad you could join us for the Word of Faith Netcast. I tell you what, I'm excited about what God is doing. Oh, man, I am just so excited about what God's doing with this ministry, Word of Faith Ministries, and all the ministries that we are directly or indirectly affiliated with. Praise the Lord. Oh, my, things are happening, folks. I'm telling you, there's just, God is moving in these last of the last days, and I am excited to be right smack in the middle of what God's doing. Praise the Lord. Let me just share with you some of the things that are happening here at Word of Faith Ministries. Most of you, I've talked to you about it recently uh, several times, even had a whole special show on it, uh, of what happened to create speakfaith.tv. Speakfaith.tv, I'll put it up here on the screen. Uh, You can go to that website, actually, and get information about what's happening with speakfaith.tv. But the idea of it is, it is a Roku channel. Now, a Roku device is a device that uh, sits on top of your TV, they call it a set-top box, and connects wirelessly to your internet connection, assuming you have a wireless network in your house, or you can actually plug in a cable and, uh, you know, plug it in physically into your network. But basically, once it's on the internet, you can connect to the Roku site, okay, roku.com, R-O-K-U.com, and that will allow you to sign up for Uh, a lot of free programming and I'm saying there's no monthly fees it's free programming uh, for a lot of these various Roku channels of which speakfaith.tv is one it is a hundred percent free won't cost you anything you connect to it and here's the big news are you ready the big news is we just added Dr. Jerry Savelle to our speakfaith.tv Roku channel I am so excited about that I've been listening to Jerry Savelle for years and years and years, since the 70s, uh, when he started ministering with Brother Kenneth Copeland. And I tell you, I have I have been, I, oh, wow. I was just thinking about one time back in 1980, it was either 1979 or 1980, somewhere in that time frame, I was at the Anaheim Believers Convention in Anaheim, California, uh, just outside of Los Angeles there. And uh, Brother Copeland was having his... It may have been his first West Coast Believers Convention. I don't remember. But anyway, I was there in the audience. Brother uh, Jerry got up to minister, and he was just teaching the Word. I mean, just teaching, teaching the Word of God. There was no special service going on. It wasn't a healing service or anything. And this lady is in a wheelchair. She just calmly gets up out of her wheelchair and starts pushing the wheelchair across in front of the stage you know, the platform there where there, where Brother Jerry's ministering, and the whole place just went nuts. Everybody stood on their feet, shouted, lifted their arms, praised the Lord. I mean, it was exciting. This lady just heard the word. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God, Romans ten seventeen. God sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Hallelujah. So she hears the word and just gets up and walks out of her wheelchair. Woo! I'm telling you, the place came apart at the seams. We had a Holy Ghost hoedown. Hallelujah. (laughs) Oh, my. So, I mean, I've been listening to Brother Jerry a long, long time. And his ministry is powerful. And he has a special revelation in the area of favor. His current show, TV show, and now on the Roku channel, uh, he's talking about favor. And I'm telling you, you need to tune in and listen to Brother Jerry and his daughter, Terry Savelle Foy, and they are sharing the uncompromising word of faith, and now they're doing it on speakfaith.tv. Hallelujah. I tell you, I am excited about that. Of course, we still have Pastor Ed Taylor there on speakfaith.tv, and of course, this very netcast that you're watching right now on speakfaith.tv. Our numbers are way up. We're up around... 2,300 households that are connected 
to the Roku channel. And if you're interested, if you don't have a Roku box and you're thinking, wow, this would be great to be able to right there on my HDTV that I've got there in my home, be able to uh, tune in and see uh, Brother Jerry's program and Dr. Bill's program and, and Pastor Ed's program right there on my TV. Wow, that'd be great. Well, I'll tell you what you need to do. Just go to our website, WOFM. Dot .org I'll put it here up on the screen wofm.org and in the lower right hand corner there's a bright red banner that has a little picture of a Roku box on it matter of fact I'll put that up here on the bottom of the screen so you can see what that banner looks like and you click on that banner it will take you to a page that will allow you to order a Roku box as inexpensively as possible now I I don't get you know, I don't get paid for the Roku box itself. You know what I'm saying? That 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 goes to Roku. They they're selling the box. But once you get that box, all right. Once you get the box, then you um can connect in. Let me let me correct one thing there. When I say I don't get paid, okay, that link because I'm an affiliate means that I get a couple of dollars for referring you, okay? but I don't get paid for the box. I'm not selling the box. You see what I'm saying? I want to be perfectly clear on that. I want to be right up front with you that that link, that's why I want you to use that link because it helps the ministry, okay? So, I just wanted to say that. But here's the thing. That little box, once you pay for it, $49, $79, depending on what version you get and the features that you want, once you get that little box, there's no additional fees unless you sign up to a network that charges fees like Netflix okay that's like eight dollars a month you know different networks have different fees depending on their services but speakfaith.tv is a hundred percent free believers voice of victory television bbov.tv that's a hundred percent free rhema.tv that's a hundred percent free a rhema uh, the rhema roku channel I don't think it's dot tv but you, you know what I'm saying that channel is 100% free. There's a lots of channels out there that you can get free programming, even free movies off of. Uh, if you want the more premium movies, that would be something like Netflix, so that would cost a little more. But I'm telling you, the number of people that are watching these programs just keeps going up and up and up. And we're reaching people with this venue of preaching the uncompromising word of faith and that's what I wanted to share with you. I felt like it was important to take this time to really explain how all that works so that you can, if you want, be able to be part of that ministry. Now, if you say, well, Dr. Bill, you know, hey, more power to you. I'm glad you're getting the word out, uh, but I'd like to just contribute to the ministry. Well, you can just do that. You can go to our website, wfm.org. There's a tag there, a little, you know, uh, t tab there on the website that is donate to the ministry. You can click on that and donate if you want to that way. Praise the Lord. But the one way without giving any finances at all, you know, that you can help is to tell your friends about SpeakFaith.tv's Roku channel. All you got to do to do that is send out an email, get on Facebook, get on Twitter. Get on all the different means that you have, word of mouth. Tell folks at your church. You know, wherever you go to church, say, hey, guess what? You can get the uncompromising word of faith right on your local TV set through this special means. All right, well, praise God. I just wanted to take the time to share that with you. Right now, let's get into the word of God. Let's go to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. I want to start right at the very first verse and read what this is talking about, and then we're going to talk about the real thing that I want to get into about God being the God of increase. Amen? Let's read beginning in verse 1. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, that's flesh ruled, even as unto babes in Christ. So he couldn't address them as adults spiritually. He was having to address them as babes. He said, I fed you with milk and not with meat. You know, we talk about the meat of the word. 
We talk about the milk of the word. He was saying, I can't give you the meat of the word. I can only give you milk. For hitherto, or up to this point, you were not able to bear it. Neither yet now are ye able. Now, you know, it sounds like he's having problems with these folks. They weren't ready to get into the deep things he wanted to share with them. Let's keep reading here. For ye are yet carnal, flesh or body ruled, for whereas there is among you envying, now notice what was the indicator to him that they weren't ready for the meat of the word. Envying, strife, divisions, are you not carnal and walk as men? One translation says, are you not carnal and walk as mere unregenerated men? That's what he's talking about here. You need to be better than a mere unregenerated man. You need to react better than a carnal person, a flesh-ruled person. Person, You need to be able to be above, so to speak, envying and strife and division. There's too many Christians that are trying to divide themselves from other believers. Maybe they're doing it along doctrine lines. Sadly, a lot of them are doing it under uh, racial lines. You know, all one race in one church, all another race in another church. That is just totally wrong and unscriptural. There is no male nor female. There is no difference between races in Christ Jesus. Amen? So racial lines should not be an issue with you as a believer. Neither should envying, you know. Well, they got more than I got. They drive a fancier car than I got. We shouldn't be envying each other. We shouldn't be in strife, combative, talking against each other. We shouldn't be doing these things. There shouldn't be divisions among the body of Christ. That is carnality. That is flesh ruled. See, it all comes from me, 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 me. I want to have more than you got. I, you know, the old thing of keeping up with the Joneses. Man, them Joneses, they were always getting more stuff and you wanted their stuff. That's envying. Envying, strife, division, that's carnality. We shouldn't be walking as mere men. Verse 4, he says, For while one saith, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are you not carnal? Now today, we'd say, I am of Hagen. Another one would say, I am of Copeland. <laughs> In other words, different ministers following after those ministers to the point that it causes division and strife, that is carnal. You say, yeah, but I'm a big fan of Brother Copeland. Well, I am too, praise the Lord. I greatly respect Brother Copeland's ministry. I greatly respect Jerry Savelle's ministry. We were talking about that earlier. We were talking about speakfaith.tv. I love these ministers, but you know what? I don't follow the man. I follow the Word of God. I don't follow the man teaching me the Word of God. I follow the Lord Jesus Christ that they're teaching about. You see the difference? We're not following people. See, look at the carnal world. They get all caught up in who's the latest, greatest, hot new star. You know, it's all personality cult. It's all people following other people. And we're not following people. We're following the Lord Jesus Christ, who is in heaven, seated at the right hand of the Father, interceding for us. Hallelujah. We follow the God who created this whole universe. The people, I mean, bless their hearts. You know, Brother Copeland, Brother Jerry, they're doing what God's called them to do, and that's exciting, and I greatly applaud that, and I support their ministry. Hallelujah. But I'm not a cult follower of a person. You see what I'm saying? A lot of people, now I'm probably out of date here, but a lot of people, you know, are cult followers of people like Paris Hilton. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> or the Kardashians, whoever they are. You know, you hear these things about people following after these folks and watching their TV shows, and, and they wouldn't miss a, a whatever it is. I don't know, whatever these people are on, Jersey Shore, or whatever the show is. They wouldn't miss any of that because they're following those people. We're not to be people followers. We're not to be uh, the cult of personality followers. You know, some people wouldn't make a move unless they hear from Oprah. Some people wouldn't make a move unless they hear from Dr. Phil. Oh, my goodness. No. 
We don't follow after people. That's carnality. That's flesh rule. What we do is we follow after the Lord Jesus Christ. We follow after the Word of God. We follow after God himself, the creator of the universe. That's who you follow. That's who you imitate. See, the Word of God says, be imitators of God. And the word imitate there is the Greek word mimetes, which means like a mimic. We get the word mimic from that. You know, a mimic can take on the attributes of a person so much that when they mimic them, it's, they sound like them, they look like them, they act like them, they move like them. They mimic them. We're to mimic God, not people. God, hallelujah. Woo. Amen. We're to be imitators, mimics of God and what we do. All right. Let's go back to the point he's making here. For while one saith, I'm of Paul, another I'm of Apollos, are you not carnal? Isn't that coming from a carnal point of view? That's what he's saying. Who then is Paul, or who is Apollos, but ministers by whom ye believed, even as the Lord gave to every man? In other words, you heard the message from Brother Copeland. You heard the message from Brother Jerry. You heard the message from Brother Creflo Dollar and Kenneth Hagin and all these ministers. And I appreciate and applaud their ministry, and, and I greatly respect them as teachers of the Word of God and preachers of the Word of God. Don't get me wrong, but we don't follow the man. We follow the truth of the Word of God that they happen to be preaching. So, they are the ministers by whom you believed, even as the Lord gave unto every man. Now, notice verse 6. This is what I want to get to. Paul says here, I have planted, Apollos watered, now see, get a picture of a seed being planted in the ground. Paul is saying, I opened up the soil and planted the seed and covered it back up. Apollos came along and he watered it. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. God's the one that causes that seed to germinate and grow and break forth out of the ground with a little green shoot and grow bigger and bigger. God is the one that does that. Paul didn't do that. He just planted the seed in the dirt. Apollos didn't do that. He just watered it. But God gives the increase. Now, that's the point I want to get to. That's what I want to talk about. God is the God of increase. He is the one that set in motion this whole system of increase. I want you to think about that. God is the God of increase. Matter of fact, let's... Uh, I want to read this out of the Message Bible, actually after, out of a few different translations. I'm going to start with the Message Bible in verse 6. Paul says, I planted the seed, Apollos watered the plants, but God's the one that made you grow. All right? The Amplified Version. I planted, Apollos watered, but God all the while was making it grow, and he gave the increase. God's the one all the while that was doing that. Now, verse 6 in the, uh, I believe it is the Weymouth translation, Weymouth New Testament. I planted, Apollos watered, it was God who was all the time giving the increase. I like these little different changes in the way this is worded. There's another translation that says that he increases you and increases you. He continually gives the increase. Again, these are ways of seeing this. Young's translation, let me quickly read that. I planted, Apollos watered, and God was giving growth. Now let's go back and look at the, at the word increase here. The word increase is the Greek word oxano. It's transliterated A-U-X-A-N-O, oxano. It means to grow... That is to enlarge, literally or figuratively, actively or passively, to grow up and to give the increase. To grow or to enlarge. So let's look at it. Paul says he planted, planted a seed. Apollos watered. You know, the word talks about the washing of the water of the word. Well, Apollos was preaching the word, and so that water watered that seed, spiritual seed that Paul planted. But then God caused it to grow, 
to enlarge, to increase, to increase and increase and increase, to continually grow. I say, okay, Dr. Bill, I got it. <laughs> God's the one caused the increase. Well, what you need to understand, and the reason that I'm bringing this up is, God is the author of increase. He's the one that designed it. He's the one that enforces it. He's the one that makes it work. Now, why is this important? Well, let's look at the book of Genesis. I know some of you are going, Genesis? <laughs> well, let's go to Genesis. I believe it is uh, Genesis chapter. Let's look at chapter 1. I believe it's in chapter 2, but I'm going to look at 1. And we'll start in verse 26. We'll just start in 1 and, and work our way into 2. Genesis 1, 26, God said, Let us... Us who? <laughs> the us he's talking about here is the Hebrew word Elohim, meaning God as expressed in more than one and actually three persons. Okay? God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. The Elohim is the plural plurality of God. So when God says let us, he's talking about the Trinity. Let us make man in our image. Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Let us make man in our image after our likeness. Let them, man, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over cre every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. I like what <laughs> Charles Cap says here. You know, uh, he even gave us dominion over creeps hallelujah <laughs> that's true even the creeping things you know man I, i'm glad i got authority over creeping things because i don't like insects i don't like them around me so i just tell them get away from me <laughs> hallelujah all right anyway creeping things god gave us dominion his design was for mankind to be made in his image and to have dominion Verse 27, So God created man in his own image. The image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them and said unto them, Be fruitful. This is what I want to get to. It wasn't chapter 2. It was chapter 1. Here it is. God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply. Now what's that mean? That means increase. God, right here in chapter 1 of Genesis, in the Garden of Eden, established the law of increase. Who get this. Make a note of this. This is a point you need to write some notes. God is the God of increase. God created the law of increase. He said, you be fruitful, that's increase, you multiply, that's increase, and you replenish the earth. Now, I won't get into a long, involved teaching here, but there was something on the earth that was destroyed, some civilization, some something, and the earth had been made void. See, God doesn't create anything void. The, the Bible tells us that. God does not create anything chaotic. The earth had been made chaotic by something, some event that had occurred that we're not told about directly. But whatever that was, destroyed that world, that civilization, and God says to Adam and Eve, you replenish, you, you don't replenish unless there was something there to have plenished before. <laughs> you see that? Replenish the earth. And like I said, if you don't believe in that particular part, that is not something that's going to keep you from going to heaven, all right? That's just put that on the shelf if you don't want to get deal with it right now. But he says, replenish the earth, subdue it. It talks about having dominion. And have dominion over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, and every other living thing that moves upon the earth. In other words, he said you are to be the little G-O-D, S, gods of this world system, okay? That doesn't mean that they replace God the Father as God, capital G-O-D. That's not the point. But he made man in his image and likeness for several reasons. One, so he could fellowship with him. God wanted somebody he could fellowship with. And two, he wanted that 
species of mankind to have dominion over the planet. That's why if Adam had just done what he was charged with, of taking authority, then when the devil tried to come in there, he should have just cast him out, said, I'm casting you off this planet. He had the dominion and authority to do it, but he didn't do it. Whew, wow. Things would have been very different if he'd have taken his dominion, taken his authority, and done what he was supposed to do. But all of that, we could teach on that and take hours to do it. But what I want to get to is what he said here about be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. In other words, increase. Increase is the key. Increase is what we're talking about. Now, increase as God set it up is a plan for the manifestation of the blessing. Capital T, capital B. The blessing. I'm going to put it on the screen so you can see it that way. Capital T, capital B. The blessing. God wants you to live in the blessing, in increase, in abundance. He wants you to live in abundance financially. He wants you to live in abundance physically. He wants you to live in abundance socially and with your family and spiritually and every other way. He's interested in abundance. He's interested in increase. God is not the holder back. God is a giver. Woo, hallelujah. He is the giver, praise God. He is the one that set up the whole system of giving and receiving of increase and abundance. That's what God does. That's who he is. That's his very nature. So you need to understand and you need to see that God is the God of abundance. He is the God of increase. He wants you to increase. Now, as we get further into this teaching, you're going to see that God wants you to live in this increase. He wants you to live in this abundance. He wants you to be a person of abundance, a person of increase, a person of more than enough. More than enough. God's the one who's doing it. He's the one who's causing growth. He's the one who's causing increase. Amen? Praise the Lord. Well, we're out of time going to have to go, but I want to encourage you, you can write me here at Word of Faith Ministries, our address, Word of Faith Ministries, P.O. Box 5213, High Point, North Carolina, our zip code 27262. You can also write me at my email address, Dr. Bill, D-R-B-I-L-L, -L, at W-O-F-M dot O-R-G. Join us next time. Check out SpeakFaith.tv. Join us on the Roku, and remember until then, to fulfill the Word of God. The Word of Faith Netcast is brought to you by Word of Faith Ministries and our partners around the world.